Hi there, it's Lee here again. So this time around I'm talking about money and does it fundamentally change who you are the more that you earn? Because there is a bit of a stigma around money and currency and what it does to a person as you generate more. Now a lot of this is triggered through the mainstream media that we see. Now I'm gonna let you into a bit of a tip and this may sound cynical but it is the absolute truth. Bad news sells better than good news. So a lot of what is seen in mainstream media, I'm not saying all media, but mainstream media in particular tends to be angled more towards a negative side. It's there to be more contentious because the more contention it brings, the more uh, emotion it, it generates. And we always generate negative emotions more strongly and feel them more strongly and powerfully than we do positive in, in most cases. What that does is that intrinsically means that you're going to go back to that source of information. So you're going to go back to media, you're going to keep consuming it. So that's why they do it, it's attention, it's to keep your attention. Now, money itself isn't a bad thing. So how can it make you a bad person? So let me look at this from the perspective of what you potentially may see in the mainstream media, but just generally what society thinks about money. So there's the old adage that you know, money makes you a bad person, that you know, money itself is the cause of all evil, it's the root of all evil, but it's not. I mean, how can it be? It's just an object, it's a thing. It, I mean, half of it doesn't even exist anymore. It's all virtual. So how can it make you an evil person? How can it make you a bad person? And the short answer is that it can't, it, it won't. It's what you do with it that determines who you are. But that's got nothing to do with money. That's about you. I mean, regardless of whether you have a lot or a little of money, you can choose to be a good or a bad person. Now, what money does is it enables you to do different things. So if you are inherently a bad person, and if you're watching this, I'm assuming that you're not, but if you are inherently a bad person, if you've inherently got dark thoughts and feelings and tendencies, then the money allows you to do more with that. But the same applies if you are good at heart, if you are good natured, if you are generous, it allows you to do more. And again, this is something that when we look at our mainstream media, it's often overlooked really because it's positive rather than negative. But let's take the example of the billionaires that we have in this world. I mean, there is so much money in the world these days, and I'm not going to go into all the facts around it because they all get misinterpreted, but there is a ridiculous amount of money in the world in this moment in time, and it keeps growing. There's always more money being generated because it's just how our economies are now stitched together. So the money in the world is just going to keep increasing, and increasing, and increasing until it's either falls apart, which that means the entire system falls apart, or it gets replaced with something else. But right now, we are printing money because half of it's virtual, like I've mentioned. You know, we just It's just the way that our governments are now working. So money is in abundance, but there are obviously a select few at the upper echelons of you know, wealth, of financial wealth, who actually hold the majority of that currency. And then what's happened is that they are banded around the media as these huge business people who have done really well, they've been really successful, they've generated all this money, and they are shown to be evil. They're shown to be bad people because, you know, if you are a good person, how can you possibly generate that amount of money? If there's all this money in the world and there are people suffering, how can you have, you know, the, the real gumption to go and generate all that money for yourself and hoard it and be greedy and, and all this kind of stuff? And that's the sort of image then that we're presented with when it comes to wealthy people. But quite often what we don't see is the good that they do. And when they do it, it's often overshadowed by the good things that the people with less money, I was gonna say the little people there, but I don't wanna go down that route. But the people who've got less money, you know, they contribute. But if you're contributing money that you uh, not necessarily don't have, but it's more significant to you because of the amount that you're generating versus the amount you're giving, then that's applauded more than if you know a billionaire was to give the same amount. And of course, it, it you know to a degree it has more value because you're you don't have as much to give, and they do. But when they then start giving these bigger and bigger and bigger numbers, it just seems to be overlooked for some reasons. And that just breeds that perception that the more money people have, the more financial wealth that people have, that the worse a person that they potentially are. And that's just simply not true because the money cannot do that. Now, obviously, if people are generating money and it turns their heads because they realize that actually I've now got a lot of money, I can go off and I can do this and I can do that, and the actions that they're taking are inherently not good, well, of course that's going to be generated because of the money that they've you know, managed to accumulate, and that's the enablement, enablement again. 
However, that isn't the money doing that. That is them choosing to do that. It's just they've never been in a position to do it before. I mean, a very basic example is if you want to buy a car, you know, if you're starting out in, in your career and you've just passed your driving test, you may not have a lot of money. So you go and get a really cheap second hand, third, you know, 10th hand car, just something that gets you from A to B. And, you know, you may be envious of those people around you who are driving, you know, what the, the bigger BMWs, the Mercedes, the bigger brands that are perceived as being luxurious and rich and you know, designated for the people that have a lot of money. But then what you do is you start earning a little bit more. And as you earn a little bit more, you upgrade the car. So instead of getting a 10th generation used car, you maybe go to a, a, you know, a second generation used car. And then maybe you are able to buy a brand new car. And then maybe you're able to buy a more expensive brand new car and so on and so forth. And this is just how it naturally progresses as you get more money. So you know, nothing has changed. It's still you and it's still a car. It's just the vehicle itself is changing because of the fact that you are generating more money. So if that's the case, has any of that process been bad? Is any of it negative? Well, no. I mean, maybe you could argue it's wasteful if you're constantly up, up cycling and changing vehicles every couple of years or whatever it is that some people do. And that's fair enough. You know, that's a completely separate conversation. I'm not really trying to get into here. But the principle behind it is that the money has increased. Your personal wealth has started to increase and it's therefore enabled you to upcycle, to go from an older model to a new model to a more expensive model to a more expensive brand and so on and so forth. So all it's done is enabled you to do that. It hasn't changed you fundamentally because from day one you probably wanted that really expensive car that you just could not afford. So your desire hasn't changed. You know, the person underneath hasn't changed. You still want the same thing. But the money has enabled you to do that. And this is why then we, dri we, we really drive ourselves and we strive for success. Because the more successful we are, generally what we think is that the more successful we are, the more money we're going to have. And again, I cover this in so many different ways because this is all down to your mindset. What success is to one person is completely different to someone else. So I'm speaking quite generally here. But what's inbred into us is that we all need money. We want more money. Therefore, the more successful we are, therefore, the more money we can have. That's... The generic version and that's the pretty standard one obviously it's not necessarily always the case and there are different views on that and that is something that I do want to engender because it isn't all about money however this video is so I'm sticking to it but what we're talking about here is that money itself is not an evil thing it is just a thing it's an object it's a tool so it cannot be evil it cannot influence you neither can it make you good what it can do though is it can elevate your actions so it's up to you to choose and this is a big topic around something that I cover a lot, which is all about choice. You know, regardless of the part of your life that we're talking about. Now, I've mentioned up before, you know, I run my success and fulfillment program. I coach people to help them live more successfully and live them a more fulfilled life. That program is based on four pillars, four concepts. One is business because I you know, fully believe that business is a brilliant vehicle to generate you income so that you can use that income to sustain your life and maybe live opulently and so on and so forth, depending on what your desires and your wishes are, that's up to you. And it doesn't have to be business that does that. So just putting that one out there. But the others then, you've got your wealth and finance, which this is all about changing people's perceptions to money and how you view wealth itself. Because wealth isn't actually to do with money. That's just the way that we've started to brand it in, in more modern times. The third one then is about health and fitness, about living healthily which again is not just about the physicality, it's the mentality of it all. And then the, you know, the final one is all about purpose, vision and mindset. So I work with people across that broad spectrum of things because it's all part of life, but it's all ultimately underlined by mindset. And that mindset is that ability to choose what you do. So if you're going into business, you're choosing to go into business. You're choosing which type of business to go into. You're choosing how to run that business. You're choosing the goals that you set yourselves for that business and the outcomes that you want to achieve and the time scales you want to do that in. When you look at your wealth and your financial um, status and where you are now, where you want to be, you're choosing all of this. You're choosing where you want to go, what your targets are, how much money you want to have. You're choosing what a wealthy life looks like to you. Your health and fitness, it's the same thing. You can choose to be healthy or you can choose not to be. Okay, I will step back from that a little bit because there is obviously the contentious point of some people unfortunately do have debilitating illnesses and diseases and I acknowledge that. I'm talking quite generally here. So generally speaking, we can choose to be healthier and fitter. Even if you do have something that's maybe genetic, you can still choose to live better through that. 
And then obviously when it comes to your purpose, your mindset, your vision, you can absolutely choose what your purpose is, what you want to do with your life, what you want to get from your life. And that's how we live more fulfilled. And then it's also how we end up being more successful because we get to choose what we do. So that brings me back to the point I'm trying to make here, which you know, this video is all about money and the attitude to it. And it's this perception that money makes you evil, but it doesn't. The more money you have just enables you to do more. So it's what you choose to do. So if you have no money and you choose to, go, to do good, if you then gen start generating more, you start a business, you get a high paying job, whatever it may be that brings you in more money, you end up with more currency that allows you to do more things. If you change and you choose to start doing the not so good things and become, you know, quote unquote evil, I mean, it's a strong word and I keep using it, but it's the easiest comparison here. But you choose to do that. It is a choice. That is you choosing it. It's not the money that's doing it. But what it actually means in that circumstance is that underneath it all, what it belies is that you are actually not that good a person, fortunately. And again, I don't think anyone watching this video will be that person because this is not who I'm attracting. It's not the sort of person that I attract. But what it will do is it will show you that if you are a good person and you get more money that enables you to do more things, it means that you are being enabled to do more good. Yes, you will do things for yourself because you absolutely should. If you've earned that money, you want to be able to you'll get the benefit of that. And it's just that the benefit is not at the expense of other people. So it's getting rid of that guilt around it as well. Because again, this perception in society that money inherently makes you a bad person or having more money makes you a bad person. There's therefore this guilt around it. You know, the more money that I earn, the, 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 I must be a bad person because I'm taking it away from these people who don't have it. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not true. There's a lot of money in the world now. And like I said, it's something that we're just generating more and more and more of. So there is access to it. And yes, it's easier for certain societies and certain cultures to access it, but everyone does have access to it. It's just figuring out how to do it, which again is something that you can figure out. But that just means that everyone has that same opportunity. We are all human. We are all born more or less the same. We don't start out life differently. I mean, yes, some of us have different circumstances, some better, some worse, but we all have the same opportunity because the world is just the world. What is out there external to us just exists. So we all have access to that. We all have the opportunity to get access to it. It's just a matter of figuring out how you get access to it. And that can be harder for certain cases than it can in others. It just depends what you want, but you choose to do that. So if you have more money, if you are generating more money, if you want more money, that doesn't make you a bad person. There is no need to have guilt around that. That's just you being more successful. But then if you choose to do something with that money, just choose wisely. So if you want to be generous with your money, then be generous. If you want to be selfish and keep it for yourself, then okay, keep it. Doesn't make you a bad person. If you choose to do something with it that does detriment other people, then yeah, that's not great. And that is something that is unfortunately, like I say, making you a bad person. But just keeping it for yourself, that doesn't make you a bad person. We do need to be selfish and look out for ourselves just means maybe you're not as good as someone who is more generous but again that's a contentious point it shouldn't matter because that's all external that's all comparison this is about you and what you want what your goals are so money itself doesn't make people good or bad it just enables them to do more good or bad depending on what their natural tendencies are and again if you're watching this video especially if you've got this far into it now there is no way that you see yourself as a bad person now you may end up doing bad things unfortunately because we do you know we we cannot always control our actions. We have to be as mindful as we can, but sometimes we're impulsive. Sometimes we do things thoughtlessly and that doesn't make us bad, but it does potentially result in bad things. And again, it's being mindful of this. So yes, the more money you have, the more enablement you have to perform certain actions. So maybe there is a responsibility there that the more money that you have, the more responsible you need to be with it so that you are not negatively influencing other people unintentionally. Because that, again, doesn't make you bad because your intentions aren't bad. They're not negative. They're still good. You are still a good intentioned person. It's just the result of what you do. And if you have more and you can therefore do more, you just have to be more mindful. That's all it is. And this whole thing, this whole piece, although it's all geared around money and the perception around it, it's all in your head. It's all mentality. It's all mindset. It's understanding what money is there for, what it is doing for you, what you want it to do for you, what you're going to do with it. 
So money doesn't do anything to you. So it cannot make you a good or a bad person. It can make you a better person. It could make you a worse person if you allow it to, but it will make you a better person if you are already good because it just elevates and magnifies what you do. So it doesn't change you. It cannot change you. But what it will do is show you to the world because it gives you the opportunity to go on a bigger stage, to buy bigger things, to have more, to give more, to be more charitable, more generous. It just magnifies what you're able to do. That's it. It's the difference between if you have, again, I'm UK based, so apologies on the currency if you're watching this overseas, but if you've got £10 in your wallet, you've got £10 you can give away. That's it. Or £10 you can spend. If you've got £100, you've got £100 you can give away. And it just, again... All it's doing is magnifying your actions. You know, if you're saying, well, I've got £10 and I'm going to give that to one person. Okay, well, you've influenced one person. You have £100, you're going to give away the same £10, but to more people. So you influence 10 people. So all it's doing is it's orders of magnitude there. So if you have £100,000, a million pounds, a billion pounds, you know, just think of how many more people you can influence. And that's the scale. It's where it magnifies. It's just enabling you to do more. It's that magnification around everything. So I'm stressing the word because it is. It's just magnifying what you're capable of doing. And that's all that money will do for you. Obviously, there are other things that you can do with money. And that's up to you. That's your choice. But it will just show more of who you are if you let it. And it's going to show more of who you are based on who you want, you choose to show up to as well, you know, who you choose to be. So this is all back down again to choice. It's all to do with mindset. It's up to you what you want to do, how you want to live, how you want to be perceived. But money itself will not change you, will not make you better, it will not make you worse. It allows you to become better. It allows you to become worse. But ultimately, all it's doing is magnifying the underlying characteristics that make up who you are. And you can choose who you are. So... You know, I'm going to end it there. The last thing I'm going to say is if you can therefore choose who you are, all I would ask of you is choose to be a good person. And that's it. I'm leaving it there. So I hope that's been useful. I hope that's been maybe insightful. But um, yeah, I'll just see you next time around.